This video is brought to you today by Ghost Tags. This is my own company that I started because I wanted a glow in the dark air tag case. These things are awesome. You can stick them on your backpack, on your dog's collar, and you will be able to find it at night. We've got two colors, blue and green. They've got great reviews. Go check them out. Links to them down below. Now on to the video. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a much anticipated full review of iOS 16. I have been beta testing it for every single dev beta that has come out. And I'm here to give you guys a full review, let you know if you should install it, all the new features and everything that is coming to your device today. So Apple just released iOS 16 today, if you're watching this on the day that I released this video, uh, but iOS 16 brings a ton of new changes to your phone. And I'm going to go through every single one of them in this video, all the main ones. Could be a long video, I'm gonna try to talk fast, Let's get right into it. So let's start off with the lock screen. As you can see, my lock screen looks way different than yours if you're on iOS 15. So I'm gonna unlock the phone and then if I just tap and hold, kind of like an Apple Watch, I can scroll through different home screens that I have set up. So maybe I like this one right now. I can go ahead, I can use this. It even sets a different background wallpaper for each one. So you can set them individually. So if I go back to this one, you will see different background, different everything, and super easy to switch through these. So it's very much like an Apple Watch. Uh, and it's awesome and it's super super customizable so if i click customize right here i can go ahead and i can choose any of these different widgets to set up right here so i've got home news reminders weather uh, so if i click on stocks i can choose different tickers so i can see you know the s p apple stock uh, i can set that up here instead of weather but reminders up there clock the battery fitness if you're into that uh, so there's tons of things that you can edit and customize up here you can put i really like this one uh, but unfortunately this one doesn't show the wind speed i wish it did um, but anyways, this is how I like mine to be set up. You can change up here as well. You can put the sunrise, sunset and events from your calendar, your calories that you've used. And if you click on the time, you can actually change how it looks. So I can completely switch this up. Uh, however, I'm feeling that day. If I want it to be bolder, thinner, uh, whatever I want, I can set it. So I really like the customizability here. You can go through your photos, uh, set whatever you want as your wallpaper. Then you can set it as a pair or just the home screen or lock screen. All right, so the next thing here is live activities. So if I go into here and I go to a timer, let's start a timer for two minutes. And if I go to the lock screen, you can see it down here. Even if I have notifications, it will stay here. I can pause it, close it out, uh, whatever I want to do with it. And this is going to play in with other applications. So let's say you order an Uber and you're not sure where it's at. If Uber implements this feature, which I'm sure they will, you will be able to see when your driver is getting close straight from your lock screen. This is going to be great on the iPhone 14 Pro with the always on display. I am super looking forward to that. We will have the iPhone 14 Pro in very soon. Next up, let's talk about iMessage. So iMessage has had some huge, huge new features. For example, if I say hi, but I accidentally misspell it and put hip and I want to go back and change it, I can hold down on it and I can either undo send like this and poof, it's gone if the other person's on iOS 16. If they're on iOS 15, it's gonna stay for them. So just be advised, if you're gonna edit messages or undo send, they have to also be on iOS 16. Otherwise, it will stay. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but there it goes, it's gone. It just says you unsent a message and they can't read it. But let's say I do it again and I just type hip and I meant to say hi and I want to edit it. I can go down here and hit edit and I can just go ahead, delete the P and there we go, it says hi but it does say edited and I can click on that and I can see what it said before. So if you wanna cuss someone out and then you're like, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that and you edit it, they can go back and see it. So you might wanna delete it and you better pray that they're on iOS 16 as well. Otherwise it's gonna stay for them. Another thing in messages that you can do is mark an entire conversation as unread, just like you can in mail, uh, but that's pretty self-explanatory. You just swipe on the conversation. Let's move on to the next one. Another one that I can't really show right here, uh, but if you are on a FaceTime call on your phone and you wanna transfer it to your Mac, if you're within, you know, couple feet of each other, you can easily hand off the call to your Mac or your iPad. Uh, I've used this a few times. It's a little glitchy, uh, but it works most of the time. Um, I've noticed FaceTime does have a little bit more issues in iOS 16. Uh, Signal is a much better uh, application for voice calls. If you're trying to do a long call over two hours long, Signal almost never drops out. FaceTime, unfortunately, uh, FaceTime audio drops out quite a bit. So just keep that in mind. So the next feature right here is undo send. So if I try to send a test to myself right here, uh, I can undo it for up to, I think 10 seconds, just hit undo and it will undo that entire message. Uh, if I do send it through, uh, let's go ahead and wait the 10 seconds. All right, it just sent and it should come through uh, any second now. And there it is, just says test. I can swipe over and I can archive it or I can remind me. So this can remind me of the message at a future time, future date. And if when I'm trying to send it, if I hold long press on the send button, I can actually choose a different time to send this email. So it will 
hold it on the server and send it at the time that I want. Huge updates for mail. Very, very nice to see, and it works great. I've been using this quite a bit. You can now add medications to your health app, which is pretty cool. It will alert you uh, when you need to take that medication. So it is really cool. You can see so you can set up a schedule to get reminders, learn about potential interactions with the drugs, and track all your medications all in one place. Super cool to be able to do this. I can see some people this being a very vital function of their iPhone. Now within the notes and the reminders app, you now have a new function to sort things. Uh, if you're into sorting, you can go through and try that out. I'm not gonna open up mine because mine are already sorted how I want them, but you can sort them a little differently now if you like. In the Maps app, you can now add a new stop. So you can add stops to your route, which is something Google has had for a long time, but now you can do it right within the Maps app for your iPhone. So just go in as you're putting in directions, just click add stop and you can change that up and add as many stops as you need. And it will give you the accurate routing for each stop. And you can even rearrange them. Uh, so if you need to switch them later, you can do that very easily as well. Now, something that I don't use is iCloud Shared Photo Library. It's a new feature. You can share an entire library like with your family or something, but I could see this uh, getting a little bit strange and you know, wrong pictures being added and given to the wrong people. So just be careful with that. But yes, you can share entire albums now in iCloud Photos Shared Library. Another thing I can't really show you is Apple Pay later. So if you buy something through Apple Pay, you can not only track things, so it's now got uh, an option to be able to see, you know, the tracking information for a product, but also you can pay later. So it's kind of like you can pay in increments with Apple Pay, which is kind of cool, but I could see some people getting in trouble with that if they don't have, you know, the money up front for something. They might just want to wait and hold off on the purchase, but uh, now they can split up those payments and pay over time. So those are a lot of the big features, but let's go through some of the smaller ones. Uh, first of all, you can now set your battery percentage in here. Uh, however, it's pretty useless because you cannot see, like right now you can see the graphic. I can tell that I have used a little bit of battery. If I turn on the percentage, it will always look full until it hits 20%, but it will have the percentage in there. I don't like that. So I actually keep that off until Apple makes it uh, do both, like to show the percentage like this graphically and numerically. iCloud Plus has some new features, like you can purchase domains straight through it. Uh, Game Center has new features with SharePlay support. Spotlight can now be accessed right here with the search button. So you can just tap down here. This kind of was jarring at first for me. So when you first get iOS 16, you're gonna notice uh, the search button down here and you might accidentally hit it a few times. I know I did, but trust me, within a week, you won't even care about it. It's not a big deal. The weather app actually now has a lot more to it. So you can get severe weather alerts, which is great. But if you scroll down here to uh, maybe some information, let's look at the UV index for Nassau Bahamas. Uh, you can now tap into these and see information about the upcoming days. And it's super, super in depth. It's actually really nice. So I can check the temperature, UV index, all types of things. Uh, there's even a radar. So there's a lot to go through here uh, in the weather app. So definitely check it out. I think this is going to be pretty much replacing most people's weather apps because it's just got so much in it. It doesn't fully replace mine because I actually do a lot more with weather, but this is something that a lot of people, this is gonna be great for them. There's just so much that you can do now and just tap into each day and there's a lot of information. The Apple Music app got a few updates, but honestly, <laughs> not enough to sway me over. I actually have Apple Music for free, but I intentionally pay for Spotify just because I hate Apple Music's interface. So once Apple changes that, I'll talk more about it, but Apple Music got a few updates. The Stocks app got a little bit of an update here uh, with different companies. Uh, you can see a little bit more info about them, but honestly, it's not a huge update. If you use CarPlay, that actually got updated to be faster and give you faster access to the podcast app library. Uh, so it's easier to find your downloaded and saved episodes. There's also something called rapid security response. So in settings, uh, if you go down to general and then software update, you'll see what version you're on, right? Apple wants to be able to push security updates to your phone without you going in here and fiddling with anything. So they can now push security updates straight to your phone without your consent. I think that's good, I guess, for most average people, but um, I wish there was a toggle or a little bit more control on that. There's something called a safety check, which is a new privacy tool designed to help users whose personal safety is at risk from domestic violence quickly remove all their access they've granted to others. So that is something that exists. Memoji has some new poses. There's also something in accessibility called keyboard haptics. So when you type something, uh, kind of like an Android, it can give you some vibration and haptic feedback. Honestly, that was hyped up right when it came out, but it's pretty stupid and it's a waste of battery. So I don't know why anyone would want that, but you can turn that on in accessibility. Something else that's really cool is that iOS 16 gives you a temperature warning when you're charging, if it's overheating and if it needs to stop charging for a minute. Um, so it will actually let you know that it stopped charging, like, hey, your phone needs to cool down, which is nice. Also, they've revamped the settings just a bit here. 
Um, it looks a lot cleaner. I really like the look of the settings now, especially with this iCloud portion up top. It just looks good. So those are all of the big new features of iOS 16. Now I'm gonna have a full video going over the best settings to change for the best battery life on iOS 16. And I'm also going to make another video going over all the settings you need to change if you get a new iPhone 14, 14 Pro, anything like that, that you get the best battery life. So stay tuned to the channel if you wanna see those. Subscribe, those videos always get a ton of hits because everyone wants to save battery on their brand new phone. So do I recommend iOS 16? Absolutely, it is a great update. Uh, there are no major bugs that I've been having besides some FaceTime issues. Could just be my phone, but I bet it's iOS 16, which will be ironed out in the future. FaceTime for the most part works just fine. It's just longer calls that seem to cut off after about an hour or two. But again, if that's an issue for you, just use Signal. Uh, their voice calls almost never drop out and I really like it. So that's all I got for this video, guys. Go check out iOS 16, it is live now. I'll show you guys how to get it. Just go into settings, scroll down to general, software update, and it will be right there for you. Go check it out. If you have any questions, drop them down below. If you like the video, hit the big thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.